All right, uh, we're going to take a look at the next two problems on the review paper for the equilibrium practice problems. Let's scroll down here, number four. Number four, we have an object that's hanging from two ropes. It's a sign of some kind, and we got one rope that goes up and to the right, another rope that goes up and to the left that makes the same angle with the vertical on each rope, which is 25 degrees. So we're gonna go through our steps on how to solve these physics problems. Step one is we draw all of our forces. I've got gravity down and my two tensions. Step two, I know my up stuff is positive, down stuff is negative, right is positive, and the left is negative. And then I have to break any forces at an angle into its components. And we have two tensions, tension one and tension two, that are at angles. So how do I do that? I take, I draw my right triangle and I take a look at that. I've got my tension in the X up at the top. Why is it called tension in the X? Because it pulls in the X direction or to the right and I have the same thing going to the left for the other tension. And they both pull upward, which is this, where this TY and other TY come from. So looking at my right triangle, my tension in the X is the opposite side of this triangle from my 25 degrees. So I'm going to use sine. That's where this equation comes from. Tension in the X equals sine of 25 degrees times the tension itself, which is the hypotenuse of that triangle. Uh, we got that equation using SOHCAHTOA. If you remember, sine of the angle equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. So just a little bit of algebra on that, and that's what we get for TX. I do the exact same thing for T in the Y direction, except that that's the adjacent side. So instead of using sine, I'm using cosine. That's the Ka part of SOHCAHTOA, where the cosine of the angle equals the opposite side, divided by the hypotenuse, which is the actual tension, and I just multiply the tension to the other side to get TY by itself. If I add my left and right stuff, what I'm gonna get is my tension in the X for one of them, minus my tension in the X for the other one equals zero, meaning the two tensions in the X are equal to each other because my right stuff equals my left stuff. I plug in what tension the X is, which is sine of the angle times the tension itself, sine of the angle times tension itself, and what I get are the two tensions are equal to each other. Uh, we could have known that just by taking a look and knowing that the angles are the same, so the tensions are the same. So let's go to the up and down where we're, this problem is really gonna be solved because we're trying to figure out what are these tensions given that the mass of this thing is 20 kilograms. It's given down here. We have that down here in our equation. It was given in the problem and I wrote it on the picture. So my up and down stuff, I look at what arrows point directly up. I know that the tensions point a little bit up, but they're up at an angle. I don't want those. I want only the arrows that point directly up and that's my two tensions in the Y direction. Those go straight up. So that's why they're in my equation, TY and TY, because I got two of them. I got two tensions and they both pull up minus my down arrow, which is force of gravity, and all of those arrows add up to be zero. I move gravity to the other side, which shows me that my up stuff, TY and TY, equals my down stuff, which is force of gravity. TY plus TY is two TYs. I have two of them, so I just go two times TY, and force of gravity remains unchanged on the right side. Now, in step three of solving these problems, I know that TY equals cosine of 25 degrees times T. So I'm gonna take that cosine of 25 degrees times T and I plug it in where I have TY. So I get two times the cosine of 25 degrees times the tension itself. And where I had force of gravity on the right side of the equation is mass times G, which is 9.8. I'm trying to solve for tension. So on this left side of the equation, I'm gonna divide the two and the cosine 25 to the right side, which is where I get this fraction, MG divided by two cosine 25. I can plug in my numbers now. M is 20, G is 9.8 meters per second squared, and the two and cosine 25 remain unchanged. I plug all that into my calculator, and I find that the tensions for both of them are 108.1 newtons. Moving on to number five. Number five, I've got another sign or object that's hanging from two different ropes. One rope moves up and to the left, that's T1. One rope goes to the right, that's T2. And we know the mass of this sign is five kilograms and the angle of this rope is 30 degrees. Again, we're gonna have to do a sine and cosine thing in order to find how much this tension one that pulls up and to the left, how much up does it pull? How much left does it pull? That's T1 and the X and the Y, X because it's left, right, Y because it's up, down. My Y is my adjacent side of this triangle again. My X is the opposite side of this triangle. So when I'm looking for the opposite side, I'm gonna use sine. That's where this comes in right here. T1 and the X 
equals sine of 30 degrees times T1. I get that from my SOHCAHTOA. Sine of my angle equals my opposite side, T1 and the X, divided by my adjacent, or my hypotenuse, which is T1. T1, T1Y as the adjacent side, so I'm going to use cosine. Cosine of my angle equals my adjacent side over the hypotenuse. I just did a little algebra to get T1Y by itself. That's where those come from. Now I'm going to take a look at my up and down arrows. I know tension 1Y points straight up. So that's my positive arrow. That's why it's the first thing I write in my equation. Force of gravity points straight down. So that's why it's minus in my equation right here. I'm out of up and down arrows. So that equals zero. So I know my up arrow equals my down arrow. I can plug in what we did in step three for my up arrow. T1 and the Y is cosine of 30 times T1, which is what I'm trying to find anyway. T1 is my question mark. What's the tension? Force of gravity is mass times G. So I'm just going to divide cosine of 30 on this left side of the equation over to the right, which is where I get this fraction here. Plug in some numbers, and I get 5 times 9.8 divided by my cosine of 30 gives me the T1 is 56.6. Now when I go left right, what arrows point to the right? That's this one right here, T2. Are there any arrows that point directly to the left? Yes, there is. It's T1 in the X. That's how my equation is. T2, my right arrow, minus T1x, my left arrow, equals zero. My right stuff equals my left stuff. T1 and the x, we, have, we wrote it down in step number three. It's right here. I'm going to plug that in where I see T1 and the x, which is where the sine of 30 times T1 comes from. So my right arrow, T2, equals what my left arrow is, which is that left pointing part of my right triangle, sine of 30 times T1. Sine of 30 remains unchanged. I solve for T1 in the previous part, which is 56.6. Plug into my calculator, and I get the T2 is 28.3 newtons.